Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So with keeping with their two week release schedule, the Simu emulator team have released their brand new version titled 1.15.9. As we usually do, I am now going to be going over absolutely everything that has changed in this brand new CMU iteration. Before we go any further, while this build is already available for CMU's patrons, it will be available to everyone else for free this coming Friday the 21st of June. On that day, I will hopefully also be releasing my updated guide showing you all of the best settings and UI options for the best possible performance in this emulator, so keep your eyes peeled for that video on the channel. Okay, so enough talk, let's jump into it and take a look at everything that has changed in CMU 1.15.9. Now, before I get started with all of the major changes, if you are already using 1.15.9 as a patron supporter of CMU, please make sure that you have updated to its latest version titled 1.15.9c, as there was actually a major bug in the stream out buffer which was causing performance regressions, instability, and in-game freezes in games like Xenoblade. Blade Chronicles, The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and several other games. So as I said, please make sure that you're updated to 1.15.9c in order to avoid any of these performance or stability issues. Now that that little warning is out of the way, let's move along and get started with all of the changes we're seeing in this version. Okay, so first up, we're going to be taking a look at some general changes. The first one being the fact that the games list can now be sorted by name, game time, and last played, giving you some nice customization over the UI games list for the emulator. Next up, we've got another UI or UX change where we are now able to assign favorites to any of our specific games. This is basically going to mean that you're going to be able to set your favorite games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Bayonetta 2, or Wind Waker, and whatever you want, and these games are going to appear at the top of your games list for ease of access whenever you're using CMU. Games can very easily be added as favorites or removed as favorites by simply selecting or deselecting the favorite option when right clicking them in the games list window. Next up on our general changes for 1.15.9, they have updated the look of the software keyboard and also updated the look of the shader compilation screen. Personally, I am a pretty big fan of these two new changes as while the old compilation screen and old software keyboard were functional, it did make them look a little bit clunky and kind of outdated for any kind of modern standard emulator. The next thing I would really like to see would be a digital or a virtual keyboard I guess you could say. Personally, I think this would be an awesome addition to CMU and really would add to the couch gameplay aspect of the emulator as you would no longer require the use of a keyboard to input any of the these options or names, for example in games like The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker for your name at the start of the game, or in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild when you are required to name or rename any of your horses. Obviously, it's not something that's 100% required for any of these games to be playable, it's just something that I would really really like to see, especially so since we already have it in such emulators like one for the PlayStation 3 or PCS3 where that functionality has made that emulator so much easier to use in couch gameplay. Next up, and staying with these general changes, they have added a new UI fix for the graphics pack tree view. Previously, individual graphics packs and subcategories would be mixed together based on their alphabetical order but as you can see in this new system, any graphics packs that have tree views or drop down menus are now going to be appearing at the very top of the graphics pack menu. Again, obviously not the most massive change for this emulator, but it's still very nice to see any kind of organization changes, especially so when those changes make life much easier for any of the emulator's users. Considering the amount of guides I've made for CMU emulator, you would not believe the amount of people who get confused when activating any and all of these graphics packs, so this new organization change is definitely going to be very very useful, especially so for me when making guides and showing you guys the most optimal graphics packs you need to be using. Okay, so next up we're going to be moving on to some core changes for the emulator where they have fixed a bug in GHL lock which would not acquire the processor's lock. This has fixed soft locking and crashing in games like Just Dance 2018 and possibly others, so in the coming days I'm going to be looking over some games that previously suffered with soft locks and crashing and seeing if this new fix has changed anything with those. Next up and staying on core changes, they have added support for negative alignment to mem 
a lock from Block Heap EX. This new change means that DS Virtual Console games no longer crash as soon as you boot them, but unfortunately, due to further unimplemented services and functions, these games still unfortunately crash, even though they are able to successfully boot in the emulator now. Next up, we're going to be moving on to some GX2 changes, and if you've watched these videos before, GX2 is generally graphical fixes for any games on the emulator. First up, they have added a better handling for stream out append operations. This has thankfully fixed the polygonical distortions in Xenoblade Chronicles, and again, thanks to the fixes we received previously in CMU 1.15.2, I believe, Xenoblade Chronicles is now in the best place it has ever been on CMU emulator in relation to playability and performance. Next up, they have added the ability to handle negative inputs for the GPU 7 shader. This change is mainly to avoid vendor-specific bugs due to undefined behavior. This change also fixes NVIDIA-specific graphical bugs in games like Art Academy and many more. So again, as with Just Dance 2018, if you have ever played games with graphical corruptions, please make sure to try them out once again in 1.15.9 and see if those bugs are fixed. Again, if you don't have access to 1.15.9 already and you just want to see if certain graphical bugs are fixed in any of your games, let me know down below this video in a comment what your game is you'd like to see me test and if I can get access to it, I will test it out for you absolutely and no problem at all. Moving away from GX2 and moving on to AX, which is audio, they have implemented AX Get Multi Voice Reformat Buffer Size, and again, thanks to this new implementation, Axiom, Verge, and many other games no longer crash on boot like they previously would. At this point in time, it's not really known if many other games use this API, so again, if you've ever had games with audio issues, please make sure to try them out once again in 1.15.9 or ask me to do so down below this video in a comment. Moving on once again, we're going to be taking a look at some virtual pad or VPAD changes. They have implemented the simulation of VPAD internal sample rates for games that spam the VPAD read in a loop. This has thankfully fixed the performance in Art Academy games on CMU. Keeping the ball rolling and moving on once again, in relation to H.264 video encoding, they have added support for frames that are split into multiple NAL slices. This is required for the intro video in games like Don't Starve Giant Edition, and finally for this CMU 1.15.9 changelog but also in relation to H.264 video encoding. They have added a proper handle for H.264 DEC end, which is thankfully going to fix a synonymous crash in DuckTales Remastered. So, to be honest, that's pretty much it for all of the changes in CMU 1.15.9, and again, as I said at the start of this video, I am going to be making, creating, and releasing my new updated guide for this version, and as long as nothing changes between now and the 21st its release date, that guide should go live on that or the following day. Again, as I always do at the end of these videos, if there are any games at all that you want me to test on this new CMU version, do not be afraid to leave a comment down below this video, and if there are enough titles to include in a compatibility video for 1.15.9, I will do so absolutely no problem. Again, if you have any questions about any games and you don't want them to be included in a video or you just want to ask some questions, you can join my Discord server, you'll find a link for that down in the description of this video. So as I said, if you have any questions about any new games booting, head on over there, join and ask any of those questions. Even if you don't have any questions to ask, you should still join as it's a pretty cool place to come hang out and ask any questions about emulators. PC gaming, console gaming, technology, hardware, and pretty much everything in between. Again, at the end of this video, as I do, I want to give a massive, massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters over on Patreon.com. You guys are absolutely awesome, and if you would like to help with the day-to-day -day running of BSOD Gaming, all you have to do is head to the Patreon link in this video's description and pledge or donate to support the channel. As I always say guys, pledges and donations are absolutely 100% not a requirement for help either here on YouTube or over on my Discord, but they really do help with the running of BSOD Gaming, helping mostly with paying power bills, internet bills, water bills, and pretty much everything else required for the running and maintenance of a channel. So again, to all of my past, 
present and potential future supporters. Thank you guys very, very much. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you found it in some way informative or useful. Remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.